Our next order of business is asking how many different ways we can sample under various conditions. Now, let's start with a very simple and elementary problem. This is part of a genre of problems called ball and urn problems. The language is archaic. And who uses urns anymore, except perhaps in funerary circumstances? But it is traditional and we will continue to use it. So for us, an urn is a receptacle, a box, a cell. You would imagine that these are metaphorical urns, uh, metaphorical boxes. They are infinitely distensible. They can, you can put in as many elements as you want inside them. Right? So they're not limited in capacity. Now, now consider a setting like this. Suppose we have three balls. I've indicated them for you in colors. Uh, a peach colored ball, a green ball, and a purple ball. And five urns. The urns and the balls are considered implicitly to be distinguishable. For example, the balls I've clearly given you have three different colors, or they could have the numbers one, two, and three on them, something like a snooker or a billiard ball setting. The urns, likewise, are considered to be distinguishable, and I've indicated this by giving them numbers. One, two, three, four, five. Now, here's a question. How many ways can I put these three balls into these five urns? So, here are possible examples. So, the peach-colored ball could fly over and land in urn two. The green ball could decide to fly all the way over to urn five, and the purple ball, perhaps, also decides to go land and earn too. Uh, when you think about this, if you want to describe the experiment, all you, do, all you have to do to tell me is tell me where did the peach-colored ball lie, where did the green ball lie, and where did the purple ball lie. Now, ahead of time, we agree on a covenant we decide on a mode of interaction and operation. We decide on a dictionary of translation for how we describe things. So you could tell me that I'm going to tell you first where the peach colored ball goes, and then where the green colored ball goes, and then where the purple ball goes. Now, the moment you do that, you can compact all of this by giving me three numbers. The in order the urn numbers where these balls, in this order, peach, green, purple, have ended up. And so, in this particular example, you, all you'll have to do is give me two, five, and two. And that describes completely the experiment for me. Now, let's step back and abstract this and try to understand how this would work in general. The idea now is I've abstracted the urn and ball metaphor and said, Here's what we do. Let's decide on an a priori order for the balls. In our case, peach, green, purple. And then simply specify a triple of numbers in order representing which urns these balls landed up in. Here is an abstraction. The balls are specified in a particular order. Remember, the balls are distinguishable by color, by number, or otherwise. And where they have landed up gives me a triple of numbers. In our case, 2, 5, 2. In general, specify three numbers, three indices. Let's call them J1, J2, and J3. These three indices are numbers between 1 and 5 and represent one at a time where each of these three balls have landed. Lovely. Now we have some abstraction. From here, suppose we ask, how many ways can you specify these three numbers? Notice already, the moment we have compacted the notation like this, certain modes or directions of thought are becoming clearer. It was much harder when we were dealing with balls and urns and things were moving around, but the moment we have abstracted the essence, the mathematical essence of what was going on, the problem has simplified. There is now a route to solution. Let's think about this. The first number, J1, representing where the peach ball has gone, could be any one of five possibilities. Beautiful, let's hold on to that. The second number, J2, representing where the green ball has gone, 
has also five different possibilities. Nothing is precluded. Remember, the urns are infinitely distensible. You can put in as many balls as you want. And nothing in the problem statement prevents you from using an urn you've used before. So there are five distinct possibilities for J2. And likewise, there are five distinct possibilities for J3 for the purple ball. Now, an elementary principle of counting, which you'll have led in kindergarten, perhaps, maybe in second or third grade, or perhaps in fifth grade, is that independent possibilities multiply. This is the essence of a multiplication table. And therefore, the number of ways in which we can specify an ordered triple like this is exactly 5 times 5 times 5. Of course, this is 125. But we will ordinarily not worry about simplifying such numbers. The logic behind the calculation, for our purposes, is much more important than the final answer. So the idea here is that the number of urns multiplies three times. And of course, from very early on in school, we have a short compact notation for this. We call it 5 to the power 3, or 5 cubed. This is the power notation with which we are very familiar. So, at end, what have we concluded? So, in fine, there are 5 to the power 3 distinct ways in which three distinguishable balls can be distributed into five distinguishable urns. Once we've understood the basic principle, we very quickly abstract out and try to find the general answer. So, let's put in some notation. It's going to look a little formidable at first sight, but if you keep this example in mind, it'll become transparent. So, here is the question. Suppose I start with a population with n elements. a1 through an, enclosed in curly brackets because it is a set. The order does not matter. Suppose I select from this population an ordered sample of size k. I'm selecting three urns out of the five to place my three balls in some order. I'm selecting k urns out of my n to place my k balls in some order. How many different ways can I specify this? How many different ordered samples of size k are there? When sampling is with replacement from an underlying finite population of size n. Notice that's a lot of verbiage. But the mathematical notation compacts all of that through our dictionary of translation into something very simple and susceptible of easy analysis. And the analysis is exactly the same as before. The first number, the first urn for the first ball can be specified in n ways. The second urn for the second ball can be specified independently in n ways. Similarly, n for the third and n for the kth independent possibilities multiply and therefore there are n times n times n k times number of ways in which we can specify an ordered sample of size k when sampling is with replacement. And of course, in our usual notation, we call this n to power k.